For our first foray into doing statistical tests with Jamovi, let's try a one sample t test to keep things simple. So, if you remember, a one sample t test is what we use if we have a mean from our sample that we want to compare to some comparison number. Hypothetically, it's like we're comparing it to a mean of the population, but we can set whatever this number is as our research question sees fit. So, let's say that I want to know whether the first quiz scores are significantly different from an 8 out of 10. Maybe that's some benchmark of success and I want to see if the first quiz has significantly different scores than 8. To find out, let's go up to this t-test area up in the upper left. Click that and I will choose a one sample t-test. And now we get a window that now looks familiar because of what the descriptive statistics look like. And to the right, so far, we've got a pretty blank slate. So let's start filling in the numbers. I can choose any one of these variables that I want, but you'll notice that gender and year are grayed out because we cannot choose a nominal variable for a one sample t-test. It just wouldn't make sense to take the mean of a categorical variable. What would it mean to be the average gender? It just doesn't make sense. So instead we can take from continuous variables and put them in our list of dependent variables. So we'll just start simple with quiz number one. I'll scoot that with this arrow key over here. And all of a sudden you can see that we start to get some numbers. Based on this, things look pretty great. But the default for a one sample t-test makes an assumption that is incorrect here. The assumption is that we are comparing the sample mean to zero. But we're not. It, we wouldn't want to compare the average quiz score to a zero, necessarily. We want to compare it to an eight. So we'll see how we can fiddle with the settings to get that information. So let's go ahead and look at what those settings could be. So the first set of options is related to the type of t-test that we would like to do. There are a handful of ways of doing t-tests. In class, what we've learned is the students t-test. Uh, if you remember William Gossett, the originator of the t-test, published his results under the name student in order to avoid anyone knowing that he was releasing potentially trade secrets from the Guinness Brewery. So we will use students t-test since that's how we've done things. And here under hypothesis is where things are really going to change. Like I said, the assumption that Jamovi makes is that we're comparing our sample mean to zero. It's the same thing as saying that mu is equal to zero. The population mean is equal to zero. But that's not what we're thinking. We're thinking that this number will be eight. So I'll change that test value to 8, which is like saying mu is 8, which is saying this is the comparison number, right? In a hypothetical population where the mean is 8, does our sample look significantly different? Under this, you'll see a handful of options that go along with whether we're making a one-tailed or two-tailed hypothesis. The first option, the defaults, which I've said is usually the default in cases like this, is a two-tailed test. This is just saying that whatever our sample mean is, it'll be different than eight. Maybe it'll be bigger, maybe it'll be smaller. We just want to know, is it different from eight? So we'll keep this default checked, which is that uh, our sample is unequal to the test value. But the other options we have are to make a one-tailed test and commit to our sample being either bigger than the test value or smaller than the test value. Those are options that you have available. We'll keep missing values as they are in the defaults. We're not going to mess around with that for any of the other things that we do in these tutorials. Uh, but here are a handful of handy options, uh, one of which, uh, you know what, before, before I highlight this, let's take a look at what these results look like once we commit to 8. So if I just hit enter on 8, you'll see that it updates our results. Uh, and you see our table is starting to take shape. So this note was added to say that the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is different from 8, and that is now reflected in the results that we see here. So statistic is the same as our T-score, the T-statistic. In this case, for our sample, 
t is equal to 2.18. The degrees of freedom is 99 because we have 100 people in this data set and so n minus 1 is degrees of freedom for this kind of test which means we have a 99 and now we get a p-value of exactly 0.032 this is new for us we haven't been able to get exact p-values when we've done these kinds of problems by hand before what we would have done was calculate the t statistic of 2.18 we'd use 99 degrees of freedom to look up our cutoff t in our t table and we would see whether that statistic we get 2.18 was more extreme than the cutoff we'd find with a 99 degrees of freedom benchmark and based on whether it's bigger or smaller we would reject or fail to reject the null which is the same as saying that p was less than or greater than 0.05. Here we get exactly the p-value. Here p is exactly 0.032, which means our sample mean is, it means that there's a 3% chance, only a 3% chance that our sample would be this different from an 8 out of 10 if there really wasn't a difference, if the average was actually an 8. right? So we interpret these p-values like we've been doing all along, and because p is less than 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis and call this a significant effect. So we would say that uh, our sample had a quiz score on average that was significantly different than an 8 out of 10. right? That's the conclusion we can make. Let's take a look at some of the other uh, information that we can get out of this. If we look at effect size, we can check that box, and suddenly we get a Cohen's D included in our results, which is great because we used to have to take this T statistic and divide it by the square root of 100, and it will get us 0.218, right? So this would be consistent with a small effect size, and lo and behold, this is what we get pretty easily out of our results. Now, the one thing that may be missing from this that we saw when we did descriptive statistics is I can't really tell based on this whether our average actually is bigger or smaller than 8. Right? I know it's different, significantly different, but what actually was the average quiz score for quiz number 1? I can check this descriptives tab and get those results down here. So it'll also show me for quiz number 1, an n of 100, average of 8.24. So it's significantly above an 8 out of 10. Median of 8, standard deviation of 1.1, and SE is standard error. We haven't talked about that in class, but it's another way of thinking about uh, variability. So standard error is 0.11. So here is all the stuff that we would want to know, all in one handy table. So Knowing this, let's go ahead and move on to a slightly more complex issue of a dependent t-test, uh, which actually is not going to be all that different.